Birds, Arcs, and Central Angles Part 1. At the end of this module, you are expected to recall terms related to circle and determine the relationships among chords, arcs, and central angles. Given a circle with point A as the center of the circle, a circle is a shape with all points the same distance from its center. Or we can say that a circle is a shape with all points equidistant from its center. So equidistant or the same distance. Now, a circle is named by its center. In the given circle here, the center is point A. So we can name this as circle A or in symbol, okay, circle A. The terms related to a circle. The segment drawn from the center of the circle to any point on the circle is called a radius. So I have here the center point A and point N, a point on the circle. I will connect the two points. So we have now segment AN. Segment AN is called radius. It is a line segment that joins the center of a circle to a point on the circle. Segment AN is a radius. Then we have segment AJ. Segment AJ is also a radius. Segment EA or a segment AE. Segment AE is also a radius. Then, we have diameter. Diameter is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle and it passes through the center of the circle. Segment EJ is a diameter because it passes through the center of the circle. What is a chord? A chord is a segment joining any two points on the circle. We have a segment EL. Segment EL is a chord because it joins two, any two points on the circle. Meron pa bang ibang chord? We can say that the diameter is also a chord because it is also a segment joining any two points on the circle. Segment EJ is also a diameter. What is the difference, how do, or how do you differentiate among the radius, diameter, and chord of a circle? So, if you notice, a radius is just half the measure of the diameter. Dalawang radius, straight na radius na dadaan sa center ng circle, it is called a diameter. A diameter is twice the measure of the radius. And the diameter is the longest chord. So, ibig sabihin, diameter is also a chord. A chord is a segment joining any two points on the circle. A semicircle is an arc measuring one half the circumference of a circle. Its endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter. This is circle A, and there is a point on the circle point J and point E. If we connect the two points, notice that the segment passes through the center of the circle. This is called a diameter. So, segment EJ is a diameter whose endpoints are point J and point E. These endpoints are also the endpoints of a semicircle. There are 360 degrees in one full rotation or one complete circle around. So, ibig sabihin, ang buong circumference ng circle ay 360 degrees. So, ang kalahati niya ay 180 degrees. 
Now we have point N on the circle, point L on the circle. So, gagawa tayo ng arc whose endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter. So, point J and point E. So, this is named as arc J and E. Now, notice that arc J and E, the endpoints are the endpoints of a diameter. Arc J and E is a semicircle. It measures 180 degrees. We also have arc JLE. Arc JLE is also a semicircle. How do you name a semicircle? We use three letters to name a semicircle. Yan. An arc of a circle whose measure is less than a semicircle. So, kung meron tayong arc whose measure is 180, how about if the arc measures less than 180 degrees. Ang tawag doon ay minor arc. Arc LJ is a minor arc. May minor arc pa bang iba? Okay. Arc JN. Arc JN is also a minor arc because it measures less than 180 degrees. We can also say that Arc EN is also a minor arc kasi uh, less than 180 ang measures niya. And we have Arc EL. Arc EL is also a minor arc. How do you name a minor arc? A minor arc is named using two letters. Major arc. Major arc is an arc of a circle whose measure is greater than a semicircle. So, for example, we have arc LEN. Kung meron tayong arc whose measure is 180 at meron tayong arc whose measure is less than 180, Meron din tayong arc whose measure is greater than 180. Ang tawag natin doon ay major arc. Arc LEN is an example of a major arc because it measures more than half of the circle or it measures more than 180 degrees. Arc LJE is also a major arc. How do you name a major arc? We use three letters to name a major arc. The central angle. The central angle is an angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle with two radii as its side. For example, we have here center A and point N on the circle. So, if we connect the two dots or the two points, we have a radius, radius AN, and another segment, segment AJ or radius AJ. Now, these two segments formed an angle with the vertex at the center of the circle. We name this angle as angle JAN. Angle JAN is an example of a central angle. Bakit? Kasi ang vertex niya ay nasa center ng circle. Kapag ang vertex ng angle ay nasa gitna o nasa center ng circle, it is called a central angle. Another example, yan. radius AN and radius AE formed an angle. So, we have now angle NAE with the vertex at point A or at the center of the circle. So, angle NAE is an example of a central angle. Inscribed angle. It is an angle whose vertex is on a circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. So, we have here the diameter 
J-E or diameter E-J and the chord E-L. Now, chord E-J and chord E-L formed an angle with its vertex on the side of the circle. So, we name this as angle L-E-J. Now, since the vertex is not on the center, the vertex is on the side of the circle. This is an example of inscribed angle. Another example of inscribed angle. We have the diameter EJ or we, also, we can also call this as chord EJ and another chord EN. So, chord EJ and chord EN formed an angle. Let us name this as angle JEN with its vertex on the side of the circle. So, wala sa center, nandun sa side ng circle ang kanyang vertex. This is also an example of inscribed angle. Another example, the degree measure of the central angle is equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. So, in the given figure here, we have circle A and we have a central angle, angle BAC. The intercepted arc of angle BAC is arc BC. Yung color blue doon, yun yung kanyang intercepted arc. Now, according to the concept, the degree measure of the central angle is equal to the measure of the intercepted arc. So, it is given that the measure of angle BAC is 74 degrees. Now, if the measure of BAC, angle BAC, is 74 degrees, obviously, the measure of the intercepted arc, which is arc BC, is also 74 degrees. The arc addition postulate. According to the arc addition postulate, the sum of an arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the measures of the two arcs. Let us use the previous figure. So, we have here arc BC. Arc BC is a minor arc kasi binigay naman yung measurement niya, it is less than 180 degrees. And the other arc is arc BDC. Arc BDC is a major arc. If you add the two arcs, there are 360 degrees in one full rotation or one complete circle around. So, if you add the two arcs, it is equal to 360 degrees. So, given that arc BC is 74 degrees, what is the measure of arc BDC? So, let us now solve. The measure of arc BDC is equal to 360 degrees minus 74 degrees. Therefore, the measure of arc BDC is equal to 286 degrees. Another example, find the measure of arc EF and arc DE in circle A. Given that segment EB is a diameter. So, when you add arc EF, the measure of arc EF and the measure of arc FB, it is equal to arc EFB. So, notice that the end point of arc EFB are the end points of a diameter. Therefore, arc EFB is a semicircle. So, given that the measure of arc FB is 60 degrees. So, since the measure of arc EFB are the endpoints of a diameter, this is a semicircle. What is the measure of a semicircle? 180 degrees. When you add arc EF and arc FB, it is equal to 180 degrees. So, what is the measure of arc EF? So, 180 degrees minus 60 degrees is equal to 120 degrees. Therefore, arc EF is equal to 120 degrees. Now, given 
arc BC measures 52 degrees. Arc CD is a right angle. So the angle DAC is a right angle and the intercepted arc is arc CD. So if this is a right angle, this measures 90 degrees. Therefore, the intercepted arc, arc CD, measures 90 degrees. So yung kabu ang rotation or pag inad natin lahat ng central angles ng circle na yan, it is equals to 360 degrees. So what will be the measure of angle EAD or the intercepted arc, arc DE? So, ano na lang ang kulang pag inad mo yan para maging 360 degrees? Therefore, arc DE is equals to 38 degrees. Pag inad mo lahat ng central angle na yan, it is equals to 360 degrees. Or i-add mo lahat ng intercepted arc niya, it is equals to 360 degrees. Degrees. Congruent circles and congruent arcs. Congruent circles are circles with congruent radii. So given circle A, segment MA is a radius of circle A. So another circle named circle T. S segment TH is a radius of circle T. If segment MA is congruent to segment TH, we can say that the two circles are congruent. Therefore, circle A is congruent to circle T kasi pareho yung measurement ng kanilang radius. So, this is the explanation of congruent circles. Two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding central angles are congruent. Given circle E, so notice that angle SET measures 50 degrees and angle NEO measures 50 degrees. So therefore, the two angles are congruent. The intercepted arc of angle SET is arc ST. And the intercepted arc of angle NEO is arc NO. If the two angles are congruent, their corresponding intercepted arc are also congruent. Another circle. Let us name this as circle I. So, if you notice, given that angle SET is congruent to angle NEO, Angle BIG measures 50 degrees also, so therefore, this is also congruent to the two angles. Now, if the three angles are congruent, the three corresponding intercepted arcs are also congruent. The corresponding arc of angle SET is arc ST. The corresponding arc of angle NEO is arc NO. And the corresponding arc of angle BIG is arc BG. They are congruent to each other. So, we can say that circle E is congruent to circle I. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is Teacher Nati saying, Let us thank God for all the blessings that He has given us.